the Uvalde superintendent announced students and teachers will not be returning to Robb Elementary. They will be moved to a nearby school while the future of the Robb campus is discussed. Joining me now is NBC News correspondent Guad Venegas from Uvalde, Texas, and NBC News senior national political reporter Sahil Kapoor. Uh, Sahil, I, I do want to begin with what we're seeing in Congress. I, I know that we've been saying that they've been negotiating now for days, a little bit over a week, but it is still news that there is a bipartisan group of senators that are still negotiating this. It's not dead in the water yet. That's right, Katie. This bipartisan Senate group is hoping to have a framework ready, a framework for a deal in the coming days. Now, one of the things that's the holdup uh, here is that they want to have everything agreed to, including the finer details of legislative language, before they announce it. They have general agreement on uh, issues like mm -hmm. school safety, more money for that, more money for uh, mental health. They agree on the need for more red flag laws. They're going to structure it most likely as an incentive to states so people can petition uh, courts to take out extreme uh, protection orders, keeping guns away from people who are suspected to be dangerous to themselves or others. Uh, one of the most complicated pieces of this is background checks. They are looking at specifically the 18 to 21 year old group putting juvenile records into the background check system, given that a number of recent mass shooters have been part of that age group. They have had uh, issues in their younger years, and those records are not part of the background check system, and they want to include that. There's also some desire to uh, change the definition of who is, uh, quote unquote, in the business of selling firearms. So you have hobbyists, for instance, who sell a lot of guns, are not registered, required to do a background check. Now, what's different this time, Katie? Why are they still negotiating? Why are Republicans participating this time when they have blocked uh, gun control efforts, gun safety efforts in the past? They're feeling the heat. John Cornyn is the lead Republican negotiator from the state of Texas. Let's have a listen to what he had to say here. I do believe there is a sense of urgency, not only here in the Congress, but in the White House, and across the country. We've all heard from our constituents who are in anguish over what has happened in Uvalde and elsewhere. The cry is to do something. What's behind that sense of urgency, Katie? I'll give you one statistic. A recent poll found that by a five to one margin, Americans want gun laws to become more strict, not less strict. Five to one. Wow. Uh, so one thing, the raising the age limit to buy a semi-automatic weapon from 18 to 21, is that on the table? No, it's not. It's not in the Senate. It did pass the House of Representatives with uh, just five Republican votes. Interestingly, four out of those five Republicans are retiring, not running for re-election. That's not on the table. Other provisions that are not on the table in the Senate are a ban on semi-automatic uh, assault weapons. Not going to happen. Not on the table. A ban on high-capacity magazines. Not on the table. And, Katie, just to give you a sense of how modest all of this is, even universal background checks, which have more than 80 percent public support, not on the table. Republicans are walking a really fine line here between uh, pro-gun voters and activists in, uh, in their base who make up a passionate slice of it and uh, wanting to do something, some action. Democrats have decided that it's better to take a modest win here rather than just use the issue politically to try to bludgeon Republicans.